Hey, what's up? Colin Weaver, IT Dojo, CISSP questions of the day. Here come two. Which of the following are most likely to decrease the effectiveness of an incident reporting system? I want you to pick two answers. Here's your choices. Think about it. Contemplate. Click pause if you need to. When you're ready, click play. We'll talk it through. All right, choice number one says communicating the benefits of an incident reporting system. Uh, if people understand the why, why it's important uh, to them, to the organization, then that's going to increase the likelihood and the efficiency, the likelihood of it being used and the efficiency of what's produced. So no, that is very much not one of the answer choices that we're looking for. Choice number two says, how about if we eliminate anonymity in reporting? Yeah. That's going to decrease the efficiency. Now, we could probably have a pretty good debate about this because some people's organizations may implement reporting systems that require the person completing the report to be identified. And in other circumstances, maybe they don't. But how likely is it for somebody to just decide to not submit an incident report uh, given a particular situation, whether it's a you know cybersecurity kind of related incident, or if it was some sort of an HR style related incident. Now the CISSP tends to provide most of its focus and emphasis on things that are, you know, information security related. But if somebody feels like they have to, in essence, out themselves in order to report something that was inappropriate or that was security related, they may choose not to because they don't want to get involved. They're willing to report the incident but they don't want to have to deal with the fallout, maybe the political fallout or other kinds of consequences that could occur in the wake of that. So anonymity is an important concept in incident reporting, uh, and it really can be an organizational decision. But if you don't have it, you need to be prepared for the likelihood that people may choose to not report something because they don't want to deal with the, the ensuing headaches that are going to come from it. All right, we've got one answer, so let's see if we can find some more. How about the next choice, which says a simplified process for report submission? Hey, making stuff simple, that makes stuff better, almost always. So if you make the reporting process for incidents you know, streamlined and simplified, then that should increase uh, the overall efficiency and quality of your reporting system. So uh, that is not one of the answers that we're looking for here. All right, next answer choice. Hey, how about a lack of clear communication on what, what needs to be reported? Yeah, that's gonna decrease the quality of your system. If people aren't sure, should I report this? Is that an event? What is a security incident? What is a security event? People need to have an understanding of what that is and what needs to, or what type of things need to be reported. So that really comes back to training making sure that people are given the knowledge necessary in order to be able to identify the appropriate time for an incident to be reported, um, as well as uh, understanding what the value of it is to the organization or to them as an individual. So that is definitely the second answer choice that we're looking for, but let's go ahead and peek at the last one just for good measure. And that one says feedback on previously reported events. Uh, that's just, that's a good thing. If you have a measure of transparency in incident reporting where, when appropriate, people can see feedback related to previously reported incidents, uh, it increases the overall integrity of your incident reporting system because it shows people that, hey, I submitted an incident report and somebody actually did something. Okay, It may not be their total desired result, but it at least shows that, hey, people take action when we report things. And that's nothing but good. So uh, that is definitely not one of the answer choices that we're looking for. All right, let's go on to question number two. All right, given the answer choices that you're about to see, which of them is the most important when it comes to maintaining the admissibility and credibility of digital evidence? There's your answer choices. Read them over. You think you got the right answer? Click play after having paused, and we can walk through it. All right, answer choice number one says you should only use NIST algorithms for hashing files. Uh, in no way, shape, or form is that a requirement. Uh, it certainly helps if you use good algorithms to make sure that the integrity checks that you do on files are actually useful and meaningful, but uh, that is not likely to be the best answer choice. Uh, and certainly not all organizations are required to only use NIST-approved algorithms. So um, be wary of something like that. 
as an answer choice at least. All right, number two, maintain chain of custody. It, chain of custody, chain of custody, chain of custody, chain of custody. Chain of custody goes directly to admissibility and veracity of evidence and its usefulness, uh, not only in an investigation, but also in presentation for either internal disciplinary actions or legal proceedings uh, in the wake of it. If chain of custody is called into question, the admissibility of evidence basically falls out the bottom of the floor and there goes everything. So chain of custody is a really big deal and making sure that people are appropriately trained on how to preserve chain of custody is critically important. All right, well, that tells us what the right answer is, but as always, let's keep going. And the next answer choice says, well, hey, never interact with a live system. Now, there's a couple things about this. Uh, one is, is that uh, it's perfectly plausible that a CISSP book or something that you've looked at, you know, goes in and says that you should never interact with a live system and you should only, you know, make a you know, bit perfect digital copy of it and then examine the copy. And while that is true, that does not mean that there is never a time and a place for you to go in and interact with a live system. There is a time and a place for it. The person who's going to do so, however, is typically going to have to make that decision uh, in, this, in the moment, so they need to be adequately trained on being able to make a qualified decision to choose whether or not to interact with a live system. They also need to know and anticipate what the potential consequences are for interacting with a live system. Uh, so and then from an exam perspective, the word never uh, should cause the hair on your arms to stand up. You know, whenever you see things that are so definitive like that, uh, you should look at those answer choices uh, with a skeptical eye. So when they say, you know, you know never do this or this never happens, um, you know, whenever I'm teaching, you know, say a networking course or something like that, when I go in and say, you know, this is the way that it, you know, is supposed to work and this never happens, and then I throw up a little asterisk to say, but in this circumstance, in this circumstance, in this circumstance, these kinds of things can happen. So there's always these edge case kinds of scenarios, and so words like never should cause you some alarm when you're looking at it from a test perspective. All right, and then the last answer choice says you should hash all the files before examining the original disk. If you just kind of glazed over that and were thinking, oh yeah, we're supposed to hash files before we look at them, uh, that's all well and good, but reread the answer. The answer says you should hash all the files before examining the original disk. And what do we know about examining the original disk? Uh, we don't. We make bit perfect copies of a disk, we create an image of it, and then we examine the image. And yes, we hash the image, we hash all the files on the image so that we can make sure that the file that we look at um, is unmodified from the time the image was made and after we look at it the file is still has the same hash so we know that nothing that we did in the process of doing a forensic analysis on the data actually caused a change to the hash of the file. Uh, that also goes back to the credibility and admissibility of evidence if you can provide digital proof that this file is the same file that was recovered from the circumstance or scene and here was its hash then and here is its hash now and you'll notice that the hash is the same and it was the same all the way through. So that stuff is certainly important but um, you are going to make extensive use of hashing in the world of forensics but you are not going to examine the original disk. So that was just kind of a trick answer. All right, two more questions down. Um, Thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Like, love, all that stuff. Uh, if you like this shirt, want one for yourself, there's a link right down below where you can pick one up. See ya.